yeah. what is taking place, but I guess in a more concise way. So the communication that we received from the council, uh, I believe it was August 24th, Council Gregor raised uh, certain questions regarding the priority of the sale of lot 291. Michelle, am I getting picked up? I have a little bit of a... Yeah, yeah. I'll try to speak a little more I don't have that problem. Yeah, not <laughs> me. Um, so I, I know the question that came up, again, specifically was focused on lot 291 as opposed to lot 309. Both of those lots clearly are subject, there's many people here this evening uh, correctly referenced, subject ultimately to RIDEM and also uh, National Park Service approval. Uh, that there is no question. That is something which has been discussed since day one when we were before the council back in August of last year. That was language that clearly was put into the purchase and sale agreement, basically indicating that there could be no sale of either or both of these parcels unless and until there was approval for both RIDEM and National Park Service. Council Gregor's most recent questions, I believe, focus more, again, on the propriety of the sale of Lot 291. Uh, based on a specific statute that he has cited, correct me if I'm wrong, Councilor, but I am in General Law 45-2-6. And I've had the opportunity to review that statute, and I do agree with the Councilor that there could potentially be an authority issue relative to the conveyance of that parcel. Uh, there is, in fact, um, a specific restriction associated with that one parcel, which basically indicates that the parcel has to be used as an athletic field. And there's no question that the property was gifted to the city by you in 1970. So the target does, in fact, have to take certain steps to address that issue. Where I do take a little bit of offense is I've heard the counselor indicator, at least I've read correspondence, where he's indicated that the city of Kentucky acted in a manner that was acting under false pretenses to this council. And that, that's not true. Uh, the city was aware of the condition. The city believes that the condition of an athletic field use is basically taken care of by a separate statute that basically indicates that when a parcel of land is conveyed to uh, any landowner, not just the municipality, and that that conveyance took place after a certain point in time under the statutes, May 11, 1953. If the property is owned for 30 years, then basically the condition is extinguished. However, Council Gregory is correct. 45-2-6 basically is an issue that transcends the restriction issue. And the only way that Pawtucket would be able to address that would be to obtain some type of enabling legislation from the state of Rhode Island. The statute is clear. It is fairly unambiguous. Uh, and Pawtucket is exploring whether we wish to take certain steps, again, such as going to the General Assembly, perhaps filing a quiet title action to the Superior Court, or maybe a combination of the two. Councilor Gregor knows this because Director of Public Hospital and I met with him for several hours, I believe it was on July 28th, and we talked about these issues. We talked about the environmental issues, we talked about some of these legal issues, and I made it clear at the time that Pawtucket would look into whether or not we could address the issues that he's raised. And that's what we're in the process of doing right now. We haven't got to a point yet where we've made any final decisions, but that in essence is what the city is looking to do now. And just to make it clear, we're only talking about Lot 291 as it pertains to the issues that Council of Brothers raised. The issue of the statute, again, 45-2-6, is not applicable to lot 309, because that particular parcel, that three-acre parcel, uh, was not gifted to the city of Kentucky. There is no condition, per se, expressly set forth in that deed into the city of Kentucky. Uh, we've got opinions, not just our own independent research, but from the title insurance company that is potentially going to be providing title insurance to the buyer in this case. We actually met with those attorneys and talked about all these issues fairly recently. 
So really, just kind of recap, I agree with Councilor Gregor that we do have issues relative to the conveyance of Lot 291. I don't believe there are any issues other than the obvious ones that we've already talked about, which is we still have to get final approval from DEM and NPS. And I've listened very astutely to a lot of the people who spoke tonight, and I understand it's not, it's not going to be an easy matter, but up to this point, um, and I'll defer to Director Paul Castro. Rhode Island DEM has been very upfront and cooperative with us on this. They've never indicated that Pawtucket doesn't have a chance at all of being able to satisfy their criteria. Uh, quite honestly, for the last year, quite the contrary. I don't. I haven't spoken to them directly, but that's the correct. director has. And We've been working with Rhode Island DEM. Once Rhode Island DEM feels that we have satisfied enough of the requirements to coordinate with the National Park Service. It then gets sent up the chain to the National Park Service. So far, everything that's been done has been done in full support of Rhode Island DEM policy and procedures as it relates to this process. And again, that's not a surprise to us. I mean, we've understood from day one that we had to satisfy the requirements of Rhode Island DEM. We had to satisfy the requirements of the National <coughs> Park Service. Uh, and we understand that sometimes that is an uphill battle, but it is one that Jay Rosa, in particular, has painstakingly walked us through over the course of the last year, prior to the council even giving approval to the PNS in August of last year. Uh, Jay had already set the groundwork, had already had multiple discussions with uh, Rhode Island DEM uh, to understand what the process was before we even embarked on this endeavor. And so, and of course, this process started before I came to the department. But it's my understanding that we've been very clear from the department stance, explaining to everyone that it is a process. We cannot skip any steps. We cannot rush this process. It involves both the state Department of Environmental Management and the National Park Service. And once we go through the whole process, they could then deny it. Nobody's saying that that's not the case. Possible. But we won't know until we go through the process. And, and the title issues, um, look, I don't do a lot of real estate in my practice, but I do not. And working for the city for 30 years, I've had my share of purchases and sales of property. Sometimes there are title issues that come up. And the question is, are we able to deal with those title issues to the extent where we can actually convey their remarkable title to the buyer? If we can't do that, then there is no transaction. There is no sale. Um, so really, at this point, we're in the process of continuing to do our due diligence. And we'll ultimately have to determine whether we're able to convince whoever we need to to alleviate or deal with those particular issues. And so really, I, I, I hope that addresses Council Gregor's question. I'm not denying what he's suggesting as it pertains to that particular statute. Um, I just believe that there may be an opportunity for the topic to address that concern. <coughs> Uh, and we'll have to ultimately decide if that's the step that we wish to take. Thank you. Uh, is this anybody hearing? I can hear you. Okay. Um, th thank you for uh, your position. So my my issue here is multiple. But the first one is uh, you just stated that uh, was it you, I'm sorry, it was the planning director that. Uh, you skipped a step, right? So, I mean, my feeling is that the first step you skipped was being upfront and honest to the council at the time this transaction was first introduced to the council for approval. Well, can you clarify what you mean by that? Because I disagree that we weren't upfront and honest. With well, the okay, if, if, if I may, if you let me think, I will get to that. Sure. Okay, so I have gone through the, uh, these stats. <coughs> the first thing I have here is a letter dated July 6th. This is the uh, petition to acquire Morley Field. Uh, this is this was submitted by Jay Rose, the assistant director, to whom I was hoping to be here today. Um, I don't think he was invited to council. Okay. It's a public meeting, bro. Right. Excuse me. Public meeting. Like you gotta be invited to a public meeting? No, he's a staff person, and there was council president. Oh. Is this a meeting where only the public? Hold on, we're all here. 
What does that mean? And this is a time, this is an opportunity for the turnaround for the council to ask their questions of the people that we asked to come before us. So please give them respect and allow them the answer. It is, uh, and allow us to have our questions. You, the the councilwoman is, 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 is right, and I'd just like an opportunity to just uh, go through it as I think we can clarify it. So I'm starting with the documentation I'll first introduce you. So again, July 6, 2021, this is a petition to acquire Maloney Field, which was presented. Uh, to the council by Jay Rose, the assistant director. Nowhere in this document is there any reference that there is a lot to allow subject to a gift deed or that the council had no statutory authority in any way of selling lot 209. Would you agree with that assessment? Are you asking here? No, I'm asking you. Yeah, I, I would agree because, quite honestly, the city didn't recognize that as being an issue. Okay. What typically happens, and I'm sure you do real estate. Councilor Miles, you had a chance to speak up. I'm just one. Oh, I'm ask. sorry, I'm just responding okay. to your input. Okay. You asked me a question. Yes. I'm trying to give you the answer. If you don't want to hear the answer, then that's your uh -oh. I okay. But I want to give a full answer to the question that you asked me. Okay. All right, that, that's fine. But you don't want to hear the answer. No. <laughs> Okay, if I want a more explanatory answer, I'll I just want to now just want a yes or no. Okay, so if you so want to ask I'm done. Let's not make a statement. Let you not give me an opportunity. All right, okay. Let's, 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 let's hold it. Let's. What's new? Let me let let's, 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 all I'm just saying, Council Rep, you asked him a question, he was trying to answer it. So if you don't want him to answer, then don't. It, it doesn't make any sense. You can ask him a question and he can't answer. So you've got to clarify. Right? Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, it is. That's the same. No, I'm sure. And you got water, bro. Uh, if everybody could just please be quiet so I can finish try to finish it to us, I'd appreciate it. Um, so the next thing I'm pulling out here, this is July 6th also. Uh, this is a letter from you, uh, Mr. Miles, addressed to the council president, David Moran. Is there, and this talks about Jay's letter regarding the uh, proposed purchase of Molly Field. And it also suggests here that you have looked at the agreement with Jay Roser and you're recommending the council you see no issues with your purchase the sales agreement that you're recommending approval. That's correct. Okay. Uh, so would it be fair for me to say that there is no mention in your letter dated July 6th to the council president regarding any issues as to the deed, the gift deed for lot 209, uh, 291, I'm sorry, and all statutory provision on point regarding that. I don't have the letter in front of me. I'll, well, take, you your, I'll take your word for it. Uh, if you like to see it, I'll do it. Sure. Again, I haven't read it in a year. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you. Now, um, in reviewing the, uh, the purchase sales agreement, did, did you have a chance to look at the uh, titles regarding this purchase and sales agreement for Morley Field? Say that again? Did you have an opportunity to look at the title relating to Morley Field at the time of the proposal of the transaction? To look at the title? You the deeds. The, the deeds. search? The deeds. Yes. Okay. Um, did you see, uh, were you aware at that time that there was a lot 291 that was subject to a gift deed and was restricted? Yes. Okay. And as I explained earlier, our <coughs> understanding was that a very particular Rhode Island general law would have basically negated that condition because the Tucket had been the property for more than 30 years. At that point, we were content to wait and see what the result of the title search is revealed and what the title commitments issued by the title insurance policy indicated what issues, if any, existed. Unfortunately, the title company didn't catch the issue, and so nothing was ever brought to our attention. It was only within the last several months when we started to press the buyer's title company that they did in fact conclude that there was an authority issue relative to the statute that you referenced, specifically to what I in general law 45-2-6. 
at that point, armed with that information and consistent with what you already raised, we concur. I'm not here to deny your interpretation of that statute. I agree with you. It says what it says. But at the time, we didn't understand it to be an impediment. We do now. And as I indicated, now we're looking for ways to address that issue. So to suggest that we knew and intentionally withheld information from the council is inaccurate. Our feeling was that the restriction was extinguished and wasn't an issue that we were going to have to deal with. And again, unfortunately, a year later, the title company comes forward and basically says what you have now been saying for the last couple of months. Thank, thank you. Uh, Does that make sense? What did you say? Now, you referenced the statute, General Rose, 1956, Section 34421. That's the statute that I gave you when we met. Yes, I understand. And that's the one that uh, you were planning to kind of rely upon when they made the uh, proposal for the transaction of the purchase sales bill. Is that correct? That was the statute that we believed was controlling at the time. Okay. Uh, so at the time this was presented, the purchase sales bill was presented to the council. You were aware that there was the gift deed was restricted that you would have to do, there would be additional steps you'd have to undertake in order to be able to convey Our the title. Our hope was that the title company would have come back and would have agreed with our opinion that the 30-year statute was applicable and therefore the athletic field condition was basically void by operation of law or had been extinguished due to the fact that we had owned the property uninterrupted for a 30-year period. Okay, but the, okay, thank you. But, but at that point, you still did not know whether it was extinguished or not, whether this was a hurdle you still have to undertake. Is that correct? At what point? At the point that the purchase sales agreement was presented to the council. Uh, that's correct, because typically you enter into a purchase and sale agreement, then the buyer submits a package to title insurance company or title examiner. And Thank you. Within, I understand the process. Of okay. Yeah, but other people may not. Your colleagues on the council who don't do this for a living may not understand that that is the normal traditional process okay. in a real estate transaction. And that is what happened in this case. But again, unfortunately, the title insurance company did not catch the issue. And now they have. Thank you. And I think we're all on the same page right now relative to the issues that exist. Well, relative I, don't to the same. I don't agree. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I, I don't agree with you. If you let me finish, I can share sure. that. Okay. So I'm looking now at the purchase and sales agreement that the, uh, those people, you were the planning department presented to the council. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the representations made by self. It says here that uh, you know, this is 7B. I'm just going to read it. Subject to obtain the seller approvals, the execution, delivery, and performance by seller of this agreement, and the consummation by seller of the transactions contemplated here, right? Are within the powers of seller and have been duly authorized by all necessary action on the part of the seller. That, that wasn't correct at that time. Would you agree? That representation? No, our belief and understanding was that it was. Okay. But I agree with you that as it turned out legally, there was another statute. Okay, if I may, I'm just going to go to 7B. This is another representation warranty which is made by the salvage, in this case would be the city of Kentucky. And this would be section 7C. Seller has received no written notice of the premises or the present uses thereof do not conform to the requirements of any easement, common restrictions, agreements, or other title encumbrances affecting all or any part of the premises. Mm -hmm. That statement is also not true at the time, was it? Well, again, counsel, that's standard purchase and sale language. <laughs> these, are no, I'm sorry, these are representational warranties that are being made by the city at the time 
this purchase agreement was executed, presented to the council as appropriate for us to authorize. We did not have the authority at the time that this was brought before the council to transfer lot 291. At no point, even up to now, has that uh, aspect been revealed at such time as I pointed out to you when we had that discussion I over a month ago. I So, so here, this is where we differ, okay? So you say that this purchase sales agreement only applies, the issue right now is to the title, would only be applicable as 291. The city can convey lot 291. That is not correct. You have to go under the entire transaction that the council approved at the time in August 8, on August 18 of last year. It doesn't separate the two lots. It constitutes one single lot that's for sale. At the time that we authorized it, that information was not provided to us. We operated under the assumption that there were no title issues, no statutory uh, preemptions preventing the council from, from uh, exercising our authority to sell land in this particular moral field. That information was not provided to us. This contract, as far as I'm concerned, is void. Not just as to the uh, lot 291, but the entire purchase and sales transaction, which would be extending to the comprehensive zoning change that was, uh, that was proposed to the council for voting afterwards. There has been no changes. Our authority, to this day right now, does not allow us to sell lot 291. And by extension, since we voted on the entire transaction, the whole movie field transaction is out the window. Amen. You don't have to try to get that. and the cities and the uh, planning department to try to get authority to do something that you should have done back then is completely misleading. Mm. Ouch. Misleading? It absolutely is misleading. Your transaction is void. You're trying to, you're, what you're suggesting right now is that, I'll give you a simple example. A man goes out, you, you're a citizen of citizen, a man goes out and steals a thousand dollars. You, the police stop him, and your prosecutor, but his defense is, uh, Yes, well, I got the $1,000 that I can put back now. And under your suggestion, that would be perfectly fine as a defense, right? Because at the time that we authorized this, we didn't have the authority to do it. I, I think it's two different things. No, it absolutely is not. This, this, yes, the room is just up. At this point, this transaction is done. What I want is for the city. To, uh, I want to propose a resolution that uh, we draft a resolution essentially voiding the transaction. If they want to come back and want to introduce some other uh, form, that's a different story. As far as I'm concerned, everything that went, the comprehensive plan change, the zoning change, all of it is out the window as they all were initiated from an unlawful transaction. We didn't have the authority. What did you thought? We, we, you know, we should have known. We don't know. We don't have a city council, the planning department. When we sit over here, we're not doing research. When the representations are made before the council, we expect that it is true. And we're providing all the information we need to make an informed decision. That information was not provided by the city, not by the planning department, and certainly not by your office either. Because we weren't selling these one lot, it's specifically two lots. And again, I, from the very moment I took the podium, I agree with the council on the issues relative to lot 291. I respectfully disagree with him relative to the potential to sell 309. I also think the city can take steps if we feel it is something we want to do as a city to address the issues regarding 291. That's, that's our position. Council can yell, but it doesn't change the fact that I agree with them on lot 291. I don't agree with them on 309. And I do think there is recourse for the city relative to the issues regarding 291. 
I don't know that we'll get to that point. I don't know that we'll get the approval that we see. But I do think the city definitely has some options. The city's option. Uh, this franchise has been executed by the mayor and everybody else that needs to do it. So it's invalid. You brought before us an agreement, a purchase sales agreement that we had no authority to transfer. You seem to be eluding that fact. The fact that you're agreeing with me now that there's an issue with the title, something that should have been brought to the council at the time, it was presented to us for consideration. That was never done. Anything that you're saying about does not negate that fact. Well, typically in my experience, and I've been involved in lots of transactions where I've represented a seller, there have been many instances where title issues that parties weren't aware of existed were found during the course of the title search. You're correct. That's if there was an issue that was a fact. At the time, you just represented to us that you knew that there was an issue with the title that was gifted. You had a mistaken impression that you could have cured it post-resolution of council's approval via this particular statute here, yet 34, 4, 21, limitations of specific comments after 31 years. That clearly was not applicable here, was it? As it turns out, no, I agree with you. Okay. As it pertains to Lot 291. I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've once suggested this evening that I disagree with your interpretation of that statute. I understand that. However, what you would not seem to would be willing to recognize that you prove the planning department under your recommendation stood here before the council and represented that you have looked at everything regarding this transaction and there was absolutely no issue that you were recommending approval by the council. Correct. Okay. And, I mean, a crucial fact is that we could approve something that we had no authority to. This was a gift that the city and the planning department were fully aware of. That, that fact was not conveyed to the council. It's not in any documents that was presented before the council, because I was here when it was first introduced. It's not in the purchase and sales agreement. The only thing that's mentioned is the national park restrictions, because we had no choice about that. We had to uh, essentially let us know that it has to be replaced. But as far as the real deal is that you couldn't sell it, but you insisted, and to this day, nobody has apologized to this council. We were made a party to an unlawful transaction, okay? How you slice it, that's what happened. You brought it before us, the planning department, the city solicitor, and the administration, and told us everything's all set, go ahead, you can vote on it. Not to, uh, completely leaving the fact that we had no authority, this is essential, no authority to convey morally feel. This wow. purchase transaction was, is voided, and then you continue with that process by presenting uh, zoning changes, a comprehensive uh, plan, and everything else going forward. Everything's been for the benefit of the purchaser, not for the city or the individuals here. There was no consideration. Anything that I've looked at here, I looked at the environmental impact on the community, um, where, if, the, if this was to go through, what sort of environmental impact these children would be left with, what green space could be acquired, none. There was absolutely zero consideration. Everything has been moving forward on a fast track in favor of the developer. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Gregor. Councilman Gregor, could you turn around and clarify for me, when we signed the, when we made the agreement uh, for the purchase and sale agreement, that was how many years ago? That was last August. Last August? Okay, so last August. And then, from what I understand tonight, we're being informed that through a problem with the title company, that we found out that it's restricted now because it's not, it, it wouldn't be. So with the information that was provided with us last August was the information that the city had. And then from what I heard, Councillor Milo was just saying, that two months ago, the title company came back and admitted that they made a mistake and that it's restricted. Is that, the, is that the case? No, it actually is not. Just wait, 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 I, I just, I wanted to make a point because I want to understand. If you ask me a question, I'll let okay. finish, okay? So, no, the title, my understanding of my conversations with the citizens is that they were fully confident, uh, based on the title lawyers and everybody else, that the statute that he referenced, which was not on point, was completely erroneous, was going to be all they needed to be able to uh, to to quiet the title. So that was last August. No, no, no. This was 
about a month or two ago when they again when it was presented to us was last August yeah. and then a month or two ago the title company came back and said you're right it's restrictive no. wait wait I, I just want to make sure that we, we're getting clear on the point yeah. because when we get asked to vote on something as a body mm -hmm. that we make we're making a clear decision on what we're voting on because sure. now based on based on the fact that we would turn around and give us something last August and told, here's, here's the information, make a decision on it. We did. And then someone comes back later on and says, by the way, you guys made the wrong decision because you can't do this. Right. I, I, I'm the one who wrote it. Hey, let me finish. I was just making a phone call. I'm going to make a phone call. What you're not uh, recognizing is at the time they brought it to the council in August of last year, they had the information that Lot 291 was not subject to sale. And yet, they brought it to us and told us, go ahead and authorize it. Okay. But that was when they said that they thought they could cure it post, post authorization by the council. And they were wrong. They were clearly wrong. Because this statute specifically states you back to 4265 that any. Uh, any attempt to use this statute for purposes of the city to convey it has to be done to 426, 4526. Yeah. So there was there was no loopholes. The the quick client, the the, the, the gift deed has no reservations. It's very clear that it, it was provided to the city for the purpose of bringing that light field for the children of District 5. Who have not. In fact, it's sort of ironic because the whole point of Morley Field was started by the council at that time. The, uh, early, late 70s, yeah, who, who thought it, that uh, they should put a park over here in District 5? And so the entire molecule started with land condemnation. One side was condemnated, the other one was successful, and then against the right one, that probably, for 291, gifted it. Yeah, that was part of the issue, too, yeah. because the preliminary documents we had were a bit confusing because it did make reference to a condemnation, which ultimately was either drawn or deemed void right around the same time. They were, they were able to succeed on that 291. Right. Correct. As a result, uh, and I guess why I took the property back and, and decided I to get all that. I do. Uh, okay. it, 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 I don't disagree with anything. Okay. Uh, this but is going to be a right card. Um, let me just jump in. So my yeah. only two no questions that I'm trying to get out of this is, do we, as the yeah, Councilor Gregor asked the question, do we have the authority? do what we're doing and vote on it when we did back then. I mean, did we have the authority? Did, did we have the proper information to make that vote? Because he's, he's alleging that the administration or whoever would have known already that that lot 291 could be conveyed because... Yeah, see, but that's the thing. We weren't aware of that. We were aware of the condition. We were aware of the fact that there was language in the that very clearly stated that the property was restricted for an athletic field of use. We were again the impression that the statute that I referenced would have ultimately taken care of that issue. The hope would that the title insurance company would have come back and would either agree or disagree. Right. If they had disagreed, then we would have known a year ago what the counselor has raised now a few months ago. Okay. And when he did raise it, when we did talk in July, I didn't even report it. We immediately went back to the title company because I had never heard anything to the contrary from them. They went back in, they looked at the matter again, and basically came to the same conclusion. But is it still, because, again, you weren't aware of it, per se, the Correct. title company didn't tell you until a few months ago. Because they apparently had missed right. it Is it, I guess is our vote from last August, is that still, was that, well, yeah, was that a legitimate vote? That's the million dollar question, right? I mean, I agree that we cannot convey lot 291 unless, basically addressing the issue potentially through legislation. Right? And and again, whether we get that legislation or not, I couldn't tell. You. But that would be the way we address the issue. Where I disagree again respectfully with Council Gregor's position is that there pertains to Lot 309. Because Lot 309 is unencumbered with any restriction. It was not needed to the city by way of a gift. So the same issues that now we have to wrestle with on Lot 291 do not exist as it pertains to Lot 309. If I may, no. Go ahead. Council, I don't have a question. We'll go back to the council. 
um, I know this is not the first time that you put together a proposal to bring you to the city, especially for a sale that's this big. Wasn't it your job to do this due diligence and know about this title before you made the proposal? I keep hearing you say about the process sure. and how you didn't know, and I'm just trying to figure out how something of this magnitude, something this serious, um, slipped through the cracks. Yeah, it's a fair hard. question, Councillor. I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I wish I knew every statute that existed. But again, I've been involved in enough of these transactions that when we are looking to convey property or purchase property, there always is going to be a title search that's going to be done. But and should you have not done that title search before you presented no, this I don't, proposal? I don't do the title search. Should the city have done this title search before they made this proposal? typically don't do the title searches on property that we're conveying. <laughs> and we typically don't do title searches on property that we buy. When we buy, we usually hire a title company. And the reason we do that is because that's what they do. And they're not going to issue a title insurance policy to us. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, when, I apologize. When you're selling, the, it's not the process to get the titles because you're selling. Well, what, what we do is the buyer typically does the title search, and then if there are issues, legal issues, lien issues, other title issues, then typically at that point, we will know that those issues exist when they issue a title event. At what point did you find out that this was this spot 291 was a situation? When did when, you find when out? When Dr. Gregor raised it in July. Well, thank God for Councilor Gregor. I went back to the buyers. The other thing you keep saying is you keep, so a plot 291 is about three acres, correct? That one is uh, just shy of two acres. This is two, this is 291, and this is three so what you So what you're saying is, in order to sell 291, we have to go before the state to change the law to sell this? If we want to sell that property, I agree with Councilor Gregor that right now we are precluded from conveying that property. We can't sell that. We can't sell it to 291. But we can sell Lot 309. That's correct. And that's what you guys are looking to do. We're looking to, well, we believe we can sell Lot 309, okay. regardless. Mm -hmm. But the question is, do we want to pursue trying to obtain enabling legislation that would allow us to sell Lot 291? Well, that's not what was presented to the council, was it? In the purchase council, we got to do In the August of... Yes, in August, when, it was, when we authorized it, the, the notion that we would have to fight uh, to do legislative things, like, we wanted to... Uh, I, 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 I agree with you. I think I've already suggested okay. that. I have a question, though. Yeah. Maybe it can cut there and get the council to turn. So... Excuse me. Originally, this proposal was to sell Morley Fields, period. It was to sell two lots. It was to sell Morley Fields, the entire field. That's the intent. It wasn't just a section of park. I agree with that. Okay. We wanted to sell both lots. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't there a little piece of this sold already years ago? Yes. Was yes. that a piece that was not supposed to be sold? No. That was not a gift of piece. No, I know, but it wasn't part of this. No, it, it, it was associated with Lots 309. Right there. So it was a 10,000 square foot parcel that the city sold, I believe, in 1970. And that was associated with Lot 309. Yeah, but it was also in the perimeter of land protected by the land. Not according to plan. Uh, I, I've seen the map. It's, it's hard. According to planning and the most recent conversations they've had in the DEM, and again, I'll defer to Director Paul Castro, but we spoke with Jay very recently on this issue. And my understanding is that DEM is not a school of that 10,000 square feet. So I'll let Bert deal with that issue since that's. I actually oh, have. Oh, you got this, Jay. Uh, it's Jay. Yeah. I, I had a question, if I could. So if you go back to. That's, that's our understanding. What Council Gregor was alluding, alluding to earlier was about assuming that you're going to state, or the administration is going to state that they didn't intentionally tell them to put all the information that is on Christ. 
But the question is, as Council Gregor brings up, and I think the whole council wants to know, based on the fact that new information came forward, however that came forward and when it came forward, it changes things, well, it changes the dynamic. Is the purchase and sale agreement null and void? I mean, forget the fact, I mean, ripping it up, I mean, I know I understand that, but is it null and void? Do we need a legal opinion on that? Because I think that's key right now. That seems to, if you kind of put everything aside, you just kind of tunnel vision straight ahead. It's, is it null and void or not? I mean, what we did back in August was that appropriate at the time. I, you know, I was I'm not sure, sure. sure as it pertains to the So, yeah, we respectfully disagree with the council on that. The whole thing is you can't separate the two parts. We were selling the entire parcel. The agreement didn't call for let's sell, let's sell part A, let's sell part B. It's the combined lot. So if you have a defective title from one lot, the whole entire thing becomes defective. Let's try it. But no, basically, the agreement is the same. The agreement is the same. The agreement is the same. The council's understanding and authorization at the time it was presented to us. It was a combined lot. The information regarding that one could be sold, and it's all technology that by virtue of being a gift deed was such a cause preempted to the council's authority to transfer. Yes, absolutely. Right this entire transaction null and void, especially when the purchase sales agreement makes uh, representations and warranties to the seller that there were no impediments. None whatsoever. And that clearly was not the case. Okay. It wasn't the case then, it's not the case now. But this day, the council, if we try to hold by the we don't have the authorities to sell more in the field. It's that simple. No one is Okay. Well, we'll be discussing 
before you hold on. It's just so happening. Now everything happens back and forth. Now what do we do? They don't do the diligence, and then you come can in. I ask, can I ask a question? Uh, Was anything intentionally misheld back in August of old? No. For what purpose? For what purpose? Exactly. Second, I didn't represent the In light of anything, I think it's being true legal. Never mind withholding information. No, never. In the light of, despite uh, the comments, in light of 4526. I'm sorry? In light of 4526. Okay, that's exactly right. In light of the implication that you didn't understand, apparently, back in August of 01, is the purchase and sale of the we approved in August of 01, is it null and void and dull and in dead of the Or is it not? That's the That's not the director thinks it is. I'm not so sure that it is. That's something that I would not lose. All right, so in that case, I don't know. If, I'd like to ask for that opinion. I just want to know if we're able to yeah. tonight. Right, um, mm -hmm. Well, if, if, we're not, if we're not taking a vote, can I simply ask you to provide a legal analysis? Of the validity of that person's intent. And keeping in mind that I know Council Rose says it, it, it's when we're talking about our own field, but that's not a local reference. Sure. Everything we've done as a resolution of purchase and sales talk about two separate plots. Two separate plots. Plots, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Two separate plots, correct? Correct. So keeping that in mind, even though the vernacular is more the field, sure. they are two separate and distinct. Lots that were referencing separately in the state in every document. Because they have to leave. Don't, don't because they have to leave. And I know we collectively refer to them as one because it's got a fence around it. Two lots of like one. Sure. Big. Seven. You know. I agree that both lots they can count in both. Because they are two separate in the same lots. Okay, but, but the transaction which were conveyed to the city separately. Okay, what was presented to the council was the sale of Morley Field, period. That's what no, I was not. Absolutely not. Okay. Everything came before us with two separate lots. Right in Former Shasta Street. That's the combined lots of Morley Field. There are no distinctions. You know the title of the one. If I may. Um, the resolution that was approved on 8, I just told up minutes, on 8, 12, 2021, references flat 62A. Lots 291 and 309. They did separate the lots. In the descriptive of the towns, that's what you have to do. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about the specific descriptions of the lots. That's not what we're talking about. Sure. If somebody came to us and said, no, if I knew, the city could come to us and say, uh, Councilor, can you please look at lot 291 and lot 309 and let us know what are you going to go ahead and approve the sale? No! It's the combined lot. Mr. Marlowe says that ample time at this point to provide us with some sort of legal opinion as to this transaction was when I brought it up. And it just suggests that he gives the opinion as to whether or not 291 was sellable or not. As for the entire transaction, and do not separate. I don't see those two distinct things. This is a city council meeting. The and public has the right to give them public input, and but then we conduct a meeting so that we can get answers. So please don't no, interrupt. Please don't interrupt. We're trusting you guys to make the right decision. Please don't
to look at the other about the Lord. Yes. 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 They knew before they made 
the proposed of uh, Morley Field, that there was no five acres of land in District 5. They knew that. And if they didn't, what are we paying you guys for? Because that's what you're, that's supposed to be your role. You gave me a proposal, and I didn't have everything, and I said yes. I said yes because I really thought that the planning department and that this administration was going to do everything in their power to find us green space in District 5. I feel this like you guys knew that wasn't possible. You guys knew it wasn't possible. And then you took him for a ride, identified two places that you almost knew wasn't going to be an option. And then when you find something that I know might have costed or been a wild idea, instead of, hey, let's look at this, you made it seem like he's crazy for trying to find space in District 5. He's not crazy. He's not crazy. I can't vote for your relocation without something in District 5. I can't, no, I don't think anybody should. Because it's not, it's everybody's getting affected by that. Yes, it's going to create jobs. Yes, yeah, also going to create traffic, right? Yes, it's all about school. Talking about the kids. The kids need a place. And, 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 and you might not think this, but this is definitely environmental racism. Just like he said. Yeah. 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 They lost Newell Park. Newell Right. Back in the day, right? We we are losing Molly Fields. I can't. I can't. I gotta beg for Kalia Pop. I gotta. We gotta beg. For, thank God, Molly King is fighting for vets. Well, I believe when I see it. <laughs> okay. Um. But we get neglected on this side, and for they some odd reason, some people are uncomfortable with acknowledging that and we need you to acknowledge it. Um, you don't have to be, the mayor has been in this position for a long time. Unfortunately, this is a part that he failed for us. He failed some of us in District 5. And despite how close you guys are with him or how happy you are with his tenure or his leadership, you guys should be willing to hold him accountable for this right here. Yes, 400 jobs is great. Yes, nine doing the development on the side of the uh, side of the water is great. But you know what? That's just great for the. It's not good for District Five. This is a complete abandonment and neglect of District Five. And we gotta be able to be okay with acknowledging that and pushing this administration to do more to fix this problem. I think that's simple. I think that's a simple request. Yes. Yeah. And let me clear, I'm not saying Bianca, I'll never say that you're racist. I want to say that. I, I've known you for a long time. But, and I know you want to defend your department, but I definitely want you to be comfortable with acknowledging our experiences and our history. You've only been here for a few months, so I'm not going to put everything that's wrong in Pawtucket on you, but you have to acknowledge that there is a history here and we feel some sort of way about it. We should, we have every right to voice it without being held, that, um, you know, getting that kind of kind of treatment. That's it. I'm gonna say just one more thing before I, I, I like to close the resolution. Um, we can't. We can't. Not today. You can well, discuss today. Okay. My issue here, this has been incredibly emotional for me and uh, time consuming. But I'm so glad everybody came and showed up to get their support. I've had zero support pretty much from the council. The point that I first initiated trying to preserve green space here, I was berated. And now I've got to debate people know who they are. I was right. Okay. And my issue is nobody here seems to be at all disturbed by the fact that the planning department, the administration, the city, uh, city solicitor's office would come before this council and there was, I don't care what they said, there was deliberate omission, you know, which is 
misrepresentation of key facts, they knew they wouldn't get a vote on that they disclosed those facts. There was no way to fight back and tell me that when he specifically tells me, Jeff, where is Jeff? I wish he was here. Right? Tells me the first thing he does is to look at the deed to confirm whether or not they are restriction. So anyone who comes here and tells me you didn't know that there was a uh, specific gift deed with absolutely no reservation, no exception, and on top of it, you have a statutory authority for gifting the council's authority, and you can disclose that. That's misrepresentation. That's misleading. That's deliberate omission. So they can get the vote. So I'm not sure how we sit over even considering that on the 21st we're going to actually consider whether or not the Riverside property should be proposed as something for the council to vote on. Council has no authority. We're looking at a deal at this point that's going backwards. We have no deal. Any thoughts of replacement property at this point is moved. Any other questions?